Hello, everyone, and welcome to Preventing Slips, Trips, and Falls with AxSafe and our amazing presenter today, Marette Alexander. Thanks for joining us. We're happy you're here. Before we get into our agenda for today, I would just like to acknowledge I'm speaking to you today from my home office, which is located on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations. I am grateful to live, work, and play on these lands. Bit of housekeeping before we get going. Um, the total uh, runtime for the webinar today is about 60 minutes. We'll have a 45 minute presentation, 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. Uh, you're all currently muted, um, but please type your questions in the chat and we will address them during the Q&A portion at the end. Um, just so you know, the webinar today will be recorded and you'll receive a notification email uh, when the webinar is ready to be shared after we're complete. A bit about AxSafe for anyone who is new or joining us for the first time today. AxSafe is a non for profit uh, health and safety association supporting the arts and entertainment industries. We've been around for 25 years and are currently set up celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Um, AxSafe's vision is to have the safest and healthiest arts and entertainment workplace in the world. Some of the ways that we do that is by having our core values in top of mind, which are safety, education, accessibility, collaboration, and innovation. I'll tell you a bit about our programs for those who are not familiar. XSafe um, has an education and training team that um, presents our courses, webinars, and workshops. We've got over 23 that we're currently offering. We also do um, those courses on demand. Uh, so please reach out to us if you'd like to organize private training at any time for any of our OHS fundamentals or to request a specialty course to be delivered to your employer um, or workers. We also provide advice and consulting. That is our safety advisors who are available via email at any time. Um, and we can also come to your place of work to provide information as needed. Um, we also offer specialized services such as our AED rentals, our fit testing, our hearing testing, um, and are open to any and all ideas that will help our employers meet their regulatory compliance at any time. We have two annual events that we run as well. Our conference, which is going to be in uh, April of 2024, April 3rd and 4th. Registration is now open for that, and we hope you will all join us for two days, both in person and virtual, of amazing programming. And we are doing eight week this week, which is a little different than past years. However, we are going to be doing a campaign as usual on our sleep, our theme, which is slip strips and falls. And we'll be having an open house at the AxSafe offices this Friday. Hope you can join us for that. And finally, our resources and campaigns, which are available anytime on our website. I highly encourage everyone to sign up for our newsletter where we provide regulatory compliance updates, as well as up-to-date re resources such as our safety bulletins, which are very relevant um, to all industry members. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Maret. Maret joined our team in July and has hit the ground running, working on several key initiatives such as new and young workers and preparing resources such as Slips, Trips and Falls Toolbox Talk that we'll talk about today. She has a bachelor in um, degree in arts, uh, but has been working in the film and television industry for several years and has a ton of experience. And she's also currently working towards her occupational health and safety diploma from the University of New Brunswick. I'll pass it over to you now, Marat. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon for Slips, Trips and Falls. So uh, we'll go over our learning objectives today. So by the end of this session, you're gonna be able to define slips, trips, and falls. And in this webinar, we're only gonna be talking about falls at level, not falls from heights, which is a topic worthy of its own webinar. You'll be able to describe what common slips, trips, and falls are in the arts and entertainment industry. You'll know what their contributing factors are, and you'll know what to do with them, how to, uh, how to take care of them. And we're also gonna be going over the roles and responsibilities of workers, supervisors, and employers as it relates to slips, trips, and falls. So why do slips, trips, and falls matter? Well, 
slips, trips, and falls at level are leading cause of injuries in the workplace and one of the most frequent causes of lost time injuries. It's one of the most commonly reported incidents with one in five injuries that are due to slips, trips, and falls at work. And no workplace is immune. So these types of falls may not always result in the fatalities that we think of when we talk about falls from heights, but they still often end up causing injuries that are serious enough to require medical treatment and time off from work. So what are some of the injuries we see? Well, most people would consider a slip, trip, or fall to be inconsequential, and you might get a bruise or a strain or a sprain, but it can be a much more serious injury, such as if you fall on your head. Slips and trips can also result in back injuries, and these can be very costly and require a significant amount of recovery time. Now, I know some people look at these kinds of hazards as being minor or minimal, with the thought being, you know what, I'm not gonna slip and fall, and I'm not gonna trip over that. And the odds are, you might be right. But the thing about playing the odds is eventually you're going to lose. So I'm gonna ask you a hypothetical question. Think about when you or somebody you know slipped, tripped, or fell. Think about why, why it happened and what happened. What was the result? So the good news is that the majority of these incidents are preventable and the basic precautions are easy and cost effective. So let's go over definitions of what slips, trips, and falls are. Slips happen when you don't have enough grip or traction between your feet or footwear and what you're walking on. And trips happen when you lose your balance after your feet collide with objects or you miss a step when you're going up or down stairs. And falls happen they're a direct result of a loss of footing or you lose contact with the ground. So let's have a look at some of the most common slips, trips, and falls in the arts and entertainment industry. Their contributing factors and what we can do about them. Let's talk about environmental reasons. Hazard, the hazard of snow and ice. This is one of the biggest factors of slipping and tripping and falling. In British Columbia, injuries stemming from slips, trips, and falls are 10% higher in January. And this is in part due to the winter weather. And we can see a lot of injuries with this. Some of these injuries can be very severe with pain lasting for months and needing extensive physiotherapy. So what can we do about it? We can create a weather plan. We all know it rains in British Columbia in the winter, and at some point there's going to be snow and it will be icy. So we need to plan for this. We can order de-icer, shovels, and ice chopper. And we should be ordering this while the weather's good still, <laughs> probably in September, and while they still have them in stock. Uh, we can build extra snow clearing crew into our budget for these times and make sure you don't neglect your prep and wrap locations. At central locations, we wanna make sure to stock shovels and ice choppers and de-icer. And if you're spread out over several buildings, like I know many studios are, put some de-icer de by each building. Part of your weather plan could be a map of de-icer storage locations, shovels and ice choppers. So there are some areas that might need some extra attention, like ramps. When it's raining or you've got a mixture of snow and rain or freezing rain, these can really quickly turn into ice ramps. And if you're moving heavy equipment or bulky things like clothing racks, this can be really dangerous. You wanna make sure you address this before any snow and ice has a chance to build up on these ramps and parking lots and walkways should be cleared regularly to make sure they're not getting icy or any snow buildup. And entrance ways need to be maintained, cleared of water from melting snow and caution signs should be used telling people there's a slipping hazard here. And uh, we can use 
signage and whatever other things we have in our plan. And if we know weather is coming in, we can mention this the day before in our safety meeting. We can put up signage. We can do, we can email people about it. We can put a safety bulletin in our call sheets. ActSafe has a great resource called Snowstorms and Ice Storms. And ourselves, we can wear boots with good grip with spikes built in it or wearable cleats or ice grips. Let's talk about another environmental reason for slips, trips, and falls. Plants, rocks, and rain. We often shoot in the forests around British Columbia, and there's lots of tripping hazards from rocks and roots and plants, just everywhere. <laughs> and if we're working in the dark, we don't see them. Even if it's not dark, they can still be a slipping hazard. Uh, rope lights, when we're working in the dark, rope lights work really well to illuminate a path through this. And we can get the first AD to mention this issue in the safety meetings to help bring everyone's attention to it. At prep shoots that are outside, they sometimes lack supplies like Duradec that uh, they will use to put over tripping and slipping hazards. And these things will show up for the shoot, but they might not be there for prep and wrap. So we wanna make sure that we're planning for this. For performing arts and festivals, rain can be a hazard. If it's raining when we're loading out on the stage and the bay door is open, sometimes there's a gap between the building and the truck. And this can allow water into the building. And this can cause a slipping hazard for the loaders who are loading and unloading the truck. So again, we wanna make sure we're communicating this to everybody. We can put up signage and keep the area clear of water. We could designate one person to clear the water and do regular inspections of this. Let's talk about flooring. This can be another hazard in slips, trips, and falls. We want to look at what the floor composition is, what it's made out of. Is it concrete, carpet, tile, wood? Is it worn out and old, or is it new? What its profile is, and by that I mean the degree of roughness. This can all determine how slippery a floor will be. Is the surface level? Only half an inch can make a difference. If you're looking down at a floor, half an inch, you might not even notice it to your eyes, but they say it's a tripping hazard. It's enough to make a difference. Uneven work surfaces or poorly marked elevated work surfaces, they can also be a, a tripping hazard. So we want to reduce the chance of tripping by raising awareness using cones and signage. The floor condition can be a factor. Most studios have concrete flooring and when a show starts, these floors are usually freshly polished. This makes them extremely slippery. I've been told that they can make them as slippery as an ice rink. <laughs> on one show, the model makers uh, had sprayed wax onto their sets. And this matte wax migrated everywhere, all over the floor. And it was really, really, really slippery. And they had this professionally cleaned to try and get rid of this slipperiness. <laughs> and it was still more or less just as slippery. It was like that wax had migrated into the pores of the concrete. And the only thing that worked for them was putting Coca-Cola on the floor to make it sticky. And they had to do this every couple of days over the whole floor. And in high traffic areas, they had to do it every day. So again, maybe thinking outside the box uh, with Coca-Cola, but uh, communication, and signage, letting everyone know about uh, the risk. These can be used here. So different flooring might require different uh, cleaning methods and different products. For example, could use a high traction non-slip wax and slip resistant cleaners. In uh, performing arts and live entertainment and film, uh, we use plywood and Duradec and QuickDeck. These are often used outside. But when it's wet or icy, these all get extremely sl slippery. 
and plywood, it also warps. So not only is it slippery, it's also a tripping hazard. So on these, uh, these surfaces, you could use uh, grip tape in areas that you know will have high traffic, like in and around a ticket booth area. And obviously you're gonna wanna get that tape on before the rain or the cold weather starts. Let's talk about housekeeping. <laughs> this plays, and first we're gonna be talking about motion picture, and then we're gonna be talking about performing arts. <laughs> This is a key factor in slips, trips, and falls. So film crews, they often put their gear and equipment everywhere, leaving no clear passageways and creating trip hazards. And partly this is because there's a lack of space. We might be shooting in a small space and workers are really rushed. So this results in crews putting their gear and equipment in any available space. And in studios, when it's dark, when we're shooting, it's really easy to trip on equipment. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that's properly illuminated. And in prep and wrap locations, you can have very crowded workspaces. For example, if you have multiple departments working on one set and there's poor communication or overlapping timelines, then you might get too much equipment in small spaces, making people step over things and possibly tripping and falling. So we wanna inspect the pathways regularly to ensure there's clear and no tripping hazards. Uh, we can see where they're shooting and then we could delineate a pathway with cones or tape, letting crew know where they can and can't put their gear. <laughs> Another area where we see issues is in pre-production. Big sets cause a big mess. <laughs> Construction can get really messy when you have big sets being built, especially uh, out of foam. On one set they were building, it was almost all the way to the ceiling and out to the fire lanes. It was meant to look like mountains, so on all four sides. And there were probably at any one time about 20 model makers uh, modeling that foam. So you can imagine how quickly that foam built up. It was just out of control and people weren't taking the time to clear it up. So not only did they have a zillion tripping hazards there, but they also boxed themselves in. So if you'd had a fire or something, it could have been very dangerous. So it's a constant battle to get people to clear out their garbage and equipment. But what can we do? We could get the construction coordinator to hire people whose full-time job is cleaning, making sure that they're maintaining pathways. We can establish a housekeeping policy that we train all our workers in and make sure it gets enforced by the supervisors. So now we're gonna talk about performing arts and housekeeping there. So in performing arts, you can have a lot of issue with the setup and build and wrap out of stages. So when locations are messy and unorganized, this can cause tripping hazards with gear, tools, and equipment that's left lying around. And a contributing factor could be that departments maybe aren't working cohesively in a hectic environment. Everybody's rush, rush, rushed. Another thing that can happen is equipment laid out to be rigged in the backstage and side stage areas. This can become a tripping hazard. And if you have stage hands carrying awkwardly sized items on or off the stage, they might not see this equipment laid out to be rigged. Dollies left unattended with their wheels on the ground can cause people to step on them and slide forward. This is a big hazard. And, you know, a, mitigate, a contributing factor there is people are really focused on their work. They're not necessarily looking at the ground, seeing what all the hazards are, or maybe they're, in the case of carrying awkwardly sized items, unable to look on the ground. Um, having clutter around the loading bay when loading or unloading trucks, this can cause uh, the people doing that job to trip and fall. And again, workers might be focused on their work and not their surroundings. Uh, riggers and cable layers who might be doing their work at the same time as other departments um, could cause, if 
that's left lying around, people could trip and fall on the rigging and cables. So what can we do? <laughs> we can develop a safe working procedure for slips, trips, and falls. And we can give training to all of our workers in this safe work procedure in slips, trips, and falls. We wanna make sure we're doing regular inspections to ensure that the areas are kept clear from slip, trip, and fall hazards. Items like dollies could be put away or to the side after use, somewhere where people can't step on them. <laughs> Let's talk about lighting. I've mentioned it before <laughs> in this webinar, but now we're gonna go a bit more in depth. So studios and outdoor locations, if we're shooting in the evening hours or early morning, it's really dark and it's hard to see tripping hazards such as gears, gear and equipment. And crews are so busy and so rushed, <laughs> they're not necessarily seeing all these tripping hazards around them. Uh, so we need to maintain adequate lighting throughout all work areas, especially on stages, stairwells and exterior locations. As I mentioned before, rope lights are very effective in outdoor locations. They're also very effective around fire lanes, the edge of fire lanes. And we wanna replace damaged lights promptly to avoid any dark spots that could lead to accidents. In performing arts and live entertainment during the performance, it's dark. <laughs> and the stage hands, they regularly work on the, in the dark. And if the cables weren't rigged from above, but were instead laid out in the floor, the stagehands can trip because they can't see anything. And if gear is left in the walkway, this is another thing they could trip on. So again, we're back to housekeeping. <laughs> and during shows, uh, during the changeovers, these regularly occur in the dark and everybody wears black who's doing that work. So along with maybe tripping or falling over set pieces and dressing, they might be tripping over each other. So a preventive measure we could do here is having red or blue lights for workers uh, to see. It still keeps the lights very dim, but the workers can see these tripping, uh, tripping hazards. So all these things I've been talking about, lighting, housekeeping, flooring, snow, and ice. These are all things that the Joint Health and Safety Committee can review and provide recommendations on. So at ActSafe, we offer Joint Health and Safety Committee Fundamentals. It's a free course for anybody in the arts and entertainment industry uh, if uh, you're interested in sitting in your Joint Health and Safety Committee. And Catherine's put that in the chat for everybody. It will also be going out after uh, you'll be receiving an email about it. So, so far I've talked about walking and working surfaces and all the things we can do to mitigate the chances of them becoming slip hazards. But I've mostly just focused on correcting or maintaining just one aspect of the hazard and that's the surface itself. But really, controlling slipping hazards, it's a matter of maintaining some friction as we walk over a surface. The walkway itself is one surface, but your shoes and your boots are another surface. A surface that provides plenty of traction while you're wearing proper footwear can still be very slippery if you're wearing shoes or boots with worn down slippery soles. Ladder runs that are textured to prevent slipping can still be slippery with flat shoes that have no treads. If the bottoms are worn out and don't have enough tread on them to provide any traction, they're gonna to need to be replaced. So when you're looking at controlling hazards, footwear as being PPE are part of the least effective category of control. And they're not a solution to all slip and trip hazards, but Proper footwear can significantly reduce the chances of slipping or tripping. So implementing a footwear assessment for the facility or production can reduce the risk of slips, trips, and falls. So let's look at the type of footwear you would wear for conditions that we work in. So if it's wet and rainy, we'd wanna be wearing a flexible, 
flat soft sole with a close packed well-defined tread pattern in a soft material and deep cleats probably like a running shoe we're working in loose solids like gravel uh, a flexible sole with a well-defined tread pattern with wide channels and deep cleats. And if we're working in snow and ice, we'd want to be wearing spikes or studs that bite into the ice. Now, these might be slippery if you're going onto other hard surfaces, like going from outside to inside. But you can get safety footwear with cleats built into them so you can easily go from ice to inside. Uh, one's called traction on demand or kick spike. So keep in mind that cold temperatures can make shoe sole materials harder and less slip resistant. So according to the WorkSafe BC regulations, employers in consultation with their workers and safety representatives must evaluate the workplace conditions and prescribe the appropriate footwear. And workers must uh, wear said footwear, <laughs> and employers are responsible for making sure that safety footwear is properly worn. As I mentioned before, employers should implement a workplace footwear policy and ensure that all workers are aware of the requirement. And we have an ActSafe resource for this. We have a toolbox talk uh, called Safety Footwear, and Catherine's put the link up in the chat. Let's talk about behavioral issues. These may play a role in increasing and decreasing the risk of slips and trips. So when workers are distracted, fatigued, rushed, which I think many people in the arts and entertainment are when they're working, this can cause getting distracted, walking faster than it's safe to, losing your balance, uh, maybe taking a shortcut, like instead of going on the uh, shoveled path with the de-icer on it, you're like, I'm gonna take that shortcut. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't, you're not always making the best decisions. It can also influence choosing the proper footwear, can influence your response to hazards and our housekeeping habits. These might not be the best. <laughs> And housekeeping, it's probably the last thing we're thinking about when we are working and feeling rushed and tired. And often from the employer end, there's an improper allocation of time and resources for prep and shoot and wrapped. Everybody is so rushed trying to get things done in a tight time frame. So when you're fatigued or distracted and rushed, that's when accidents can happen. Cell phones can be a distraction. In cell phone in Japan, they refer to people who are walking around paying no attention to their surroundings and only to their cell phones as walking zombies. So obviously we don't wanna be walking zombies at work and slipping and tripping on stuff. So what can we do? We can allocate enough time for prep, shoot, and wrap. We can have the first AD talk about being mindful of your surroundings and watching out for slip, trip, and fall hazards in the safety meeting. So at ActSafe, we have a uh, few resources. Um, one is preventing slips, trips, and falls in the workplace. This is actually a WorkSafe BC resource, and it's an amazing resource, and I would encourage you all to uh, have a look at it. You can download this from ActSafe site. We have a topic called Fatigue. that has many, many resources in it for motion picture and performing arts. And there's Call Time Mental Health, so in September, we did a webinar with them called Showcasing Call Time Mental Health Training and Resources. And for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Call Time Mental Health is a public resource and mental health campaign for all workers in the motion picture industry and performing arts. Uh, this was an initiative by British Columbia's Motion Picture Industry Unions to assist workers and employers grappling with mental health and addiction issues, both in and out of the workplace. And of course, all the unions also provide mental health resources. 
Let's talk about employer roles and responsibilities. So employers want to communicate, their roles and responsibilities are communicating the hazards and risks to supervisors and employees. They are responsible for investigation incidents that can happen in their workplaces regarding slips, trips, and falls. And this investigation identifies the most relevant factors and helps prevent any future incidents. They're responsible for developing a safe work procedures for slips, trips, and falls. And they are responsible, lastly, for providing training in slip, trip, and fall prevention. So let's talk about this training. As an employer, you're going to want to conduct regular safety training. You're going to want to train all of your workers on slip, trip, and fall prevention, including awareness of any, provincial, any potential hazards, proper walking techniques, how to report a slip, trip, or spill, how to use a spill response kit, what the footwear requirements and policy is, and provide refresher training periodically. For example, in late November or December, you're going to want to do slip and trip prevention during the winter. You'll want to cover what the slip, trip, and fall hazards are, what those safe work procedures look like, and go over winter weather footwear recommendations. So earlier, I mentioned the fact that employers are responsible for investigations that happen in their workplace, including slips, trips, and falls. So when a worker falls, a number of contributing factors are usually involved. And we want to identify the most relevant factors and help prevent future incidents. You'll want to consider all factors such as weather, light level, noise level, contaminants, obstacles on the work on the walking surface, flooring type, flooring condition, are there cracks, peeling or other good degradation, flooring changes, levels or types of flooring, footwear and the task the worker was performing. And you'll want to consider all categories equally. Otherwise, uh, slips, trips and falls may continue despite preventative measures that have been put in place. So the employer should aim to continuously improve. Preventing slips, trips, and falls is an ongoing effort that requires constant vigilance and proactive measures. And your Joint Health and Safety Committee will be very useful here. They can regularly review incidents, near misses, and feedback uh, to provide areas for improvement and implement corrective measures and update safety protocols as needed to ensure ongoing prevention of slips, trips, and falls. So AXAFE has some courses and resources that you might find useful. Uh, we have a course called Incident Investigations, and here we teach you how to investigate uh, any incidents, including slips, trips, and falls. We have a course called Workplace Inspections. We teach you how to do inspections of your workplace. And lastly, we have Hazard Identification. We teach you how to identify all of the hazards at your place of work. And again, these are all free courses for people in the arts and entertainment industry. We also have some toolbox talks. We have a toolbox talk on safety footwear and two new toolbox talks on slips, trips, and falls, one for motion picture and one for performing arts. And I'll be talking about these later on in this webinar. Let's look at supervisors' roles and responsibilities. So supervisors' responsibilities are identify and correct slip, trip, and fall hazards. Advise all their workers on the slip, trip, and fall hazards. Conduct inspections for workplaces looking for these hazards. And 
ensure that their work area is free from a slip, trip, and fall hazards. The supervisor is also responsible for the training of workers. So when workers report issues to their supervisor, the supervisor should engage and encourage workers to talk to them. Let's look at uh, worker roles and responsibilities. So as a worker, you're an active team member during the workday. This means you are more exposed to workplace routines and you must act to protect yourself and other people, other workers. <laughs> so you're also much more likely to notice when something is amiss that could result in a slip, trip and fall. And it's essential for you to know when and how to report this to your supervisor. So some of the things that you'll be doing will be, you'll be following the safe work procedures. You will be adhering to the housekeeping practices of your workplace. You'll be wearing the appropriate footwear. Uh, you'll be identifying, reporting, and if you can, fixing unsafe conditions immediately. And you will be participating in training to prevent slips, trips, and falls. So we're gonna go over these two new toolbox talks that I was telling you about earlier. One is for motion picture and one is for performing arts. And these highlight the most common slip, trip and fall hazards in the industry um, and what you can do about them. And they cover a lot of what we've talked about here. So if you are a supervisor or a best boy, I would encourage you to do this with your team. And you can access these at any time on ActSafe's website and Catherine will uh, put up the link for you as well. In summary, hopefully by now you will know, uh, you'll be able to define what slips, trips and falls are. And you'll know what the common slips, trips and falls are in as it applies to your workplace whether you're working in performing arts or live entertainment or motion picture. Um, you'll know what the hazards are, like what the contributing factors are, and hopefully what you can do about them, how we can prevent this from happening at our workplace. And you should also know what the roles and responsibilities are of as it pertains to slips, trips, and falls for employers supervisors and workers. So these are the, um, the resources, uh, our inspections workshop, investigation, hazard ID, joint health and safety workshop, our, uh, that WorkSafe BC slips, trips and falls resource I was telling you about that's so wonderful. Uh, AxSafe's tool to toolbox talk on safety footwear, our page on fatigue, uh, call time mental health. Uh, there's a link to the webinar and to their site there. And lastly, our two toolbox talks for motion picture and performing arts. And uh, they these have been put up in the chat, but you will also be receiving an email uh, about this uh, as a follow up to this webinar. So now we're in the question and answer period, and it'll be myself and Catherine that will be, um, Catherine will be reading out the questions and I will hopefully have the answers for you. Thank you, Marat, that was amazing. Um, I did put up quite a few links in the chat. So I'm just gonna give everyone one or two minutes to see if they want to enter their questions into the webinar chat. And Marit will answer them for you. I would not be shocked if she had already answered all of your questions, but we'll see. Just give it a minute. Or you could even put in if you feel that this has been useful for your work site, like how you feel you could bring this to your work site. Not seeing any immediate questions. But we do have, oh, here we go. Cindy Smith would like to know if AxSafe has a binder of print versions of all of these links. Marit, do you want to speak to production packages, perhaps? Yeah, so we have a production package that uh, I am happy to bring out, be myself or Dagan, our other safety advisor. 
happy to bring out to all um, all employers to motion picture performing arts. Um, you know, you, you can just contact us and I will come down and uh, bring this to you. And that has a lot of resources. Um, as I've said before, um, you will be receiving an email that has all of these resources. Um, so you'll be able to click on those links. I hope that answers uh, your question. Nope, oh, that answered Cindy's question. Thank you very much. Another question for you. If someone has already fallen on the site, so the slip, trip, and fall has happened, are there resources to access in case of injury? Uh, once you get injured, um, then you would go over to WorkSafe BC and they take care of that portion of it. Um, where your employer can be helpful for you is um, getting back to work, returning to work. So um, it just depends on your employer, um, but uh, WorkSafe BC would probably be the ones that would be taking over from your employer at this point. Amazing, thanks. And, and perhaps just to plug uh, one of our other courses, which is Int Incident Investigations, I'll put the link to that in the chat as well. Um, that would be helpful for employers who are wanting to know sort of what the steps are. Mm -hmm. And we've got some positive feedback. Something, someone has concrete floors. So well done for assessing, touching on that. Um, if there are any other questions, we do. Um, someone would like to know, does the supervisor or the first aid attendant do the investigation? Uh, so that's covered in our investigations course. The person who does the investigation is the person who is best, uh, who has the most knowledge about it. So I always say that, say you have two people working up in a lift and one person gets injured up there. You know who's going to know the most about it? The other person who's working in the lift with them. They might be a worker. Now, the supervisor, I'm sure, would also be taking part in the investigation. Usually, it could be your joint health and safety team. They, um, somebody from there should be part of that investigation. If you have a safety person, they would be part of that investigation. Um, but yeah, usually the supervisor and other people who might be knowledgeable about it. But you, could, you should take our investigation workshop, and then you could uh, learn more about it. Awesome. I'll put that in the chat really quickly here. Um, Odette has a question that is, what are the best courses for becoming a self health and safety coordinator? Oh, well, all of them, <laughs> <laughs> all of them, all of them. Um, and probably uh, for actually becoming a health and safety coordinator, some outside courses like uh, at BCIT, they have a great OHS program. Um, I started off uh, taking construction, I think it was uh, construction safety. And I worked for a couple of years doing construction safety where you really get to see a lot of uh, health and safety at work because uh, so many incidents happen all the time. Um, but yes, yeah, so I would take I would take all of our courses and then look into other outside courses you could take to get that experience and knowledge. Um, are there any other questions um, from the group? We do have a couple more minutes. I'm just going to do some final slides. So if you have anything, please put it in the chat. Um, but I'd like to move to the next slide and ask um, that uh, anyone who has participated in the webinar today, I would love if you could scan our QR code for feedback. The survey is very, very quick. It's important to us to gather feedback for these webinars so that we can also gather information about other ideas that are interesting for us to speak to. Um, I would also like to encourage everyone to follow up if they don't have time today, we'll send it out via email. You will also get a copy of the presentation. And as Marat said, you will receive all these resource links in that. If there are no other questions, I believe we will wrap it up for today. Thank you again to everyone who participated and obviously to Marette Alexander. We will have a webinar in Q1 of next year. The topic is TPD for now, but we look forward to having you again for our next webinars in 2024. Thanks for coming.